Hey guys, it's Jimblade304 here, and welcome to Questions Answered Episode 15. This is a long-awaited episode. It's been about five months, and I'm going to be honest, I simply haven't had time. I haven't had ideas. Haven't had a little bit of motivation. We'll talk about some of this stuff later. But, um, if you're new here, and you've not submitted a question before, and you have a question, just leave it in the comment section below, or you can submit it on my Instagram story, at Jimblade304, or sometimes there's a community post. One of those three options is the best way to get your question featured. We have nine great questions today, I believe, and uh, looking forward to answering them with you guys and hopefully getting some more content ideas. If you have ideas, please leave them in the comment section below. They would greatly help and be greatly appreciated. But let's first start with our question from The Stud. So The Stud asks, who is your favorite LEGO Instagrammer and why is it me? Well, it is, but seriously though, how did quarantine affect your LEGO spending? So, uh, I'd say I spent more because of... Uh, the quarantine back in spring, I guess. I guess I don't know if we're still really on this now because everything's kind of open again. But um, I bought the Lightning Dragon, that little card shrine back there. Uh, Garmadon's Dark Fortress I bought. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other stuff I bought. I can't really think of anything else. But all that stuff I bought because I was at home and bored and couldn't really do anything. So, and I can't really say any of these. I. The Java City Gardens I got um, this year, which was part of quarantine. Uh, Jay Walker won a bunch of older Ninjago stuff. It helped me buy more nin older Ninjago stuff compared to buying a lot more newer stuff. I still bought all the new stuff when that came out in the summer. But because all that got delayed, it pushed that spending back a little bit, and I could spend more money on older stuff when that came out. Our next question comes from Pancake Studios, who asks, What are the most interesting questions you get asked? And the answer here is very simple. It's simply the unique questions. Like, I don't want to answer the same, what's your favorite Lego set 50,000 times? If I answered it once, I probably answered it 100 times. I want questions that are unique, you know? And I, I do my best to pick the most unique questions, which if you submit a unique question, you'll have a better chance of getting picked. So, that's what I want when I'm looking for a question. Is it unique? Have I answered it before? Uh, is it something I feel I could talk about and make good content out of? Sep stuff like that. Pretty simple. Our next question comes from Tony the Mango, who asks, What is your rarest polybag? And I had to do some digging for this. I didn't really check Brickset to see what was the one that people least owned. But it is, as far as I'm aware, it's a Silver Centurion, because I'm pretty sure this thing was pretty rare. I don't know if it still is, but I consider this to be my rarest polybag. I honestly don't know. I could probably check Brickset and see what Brickset says. But, after doing some Brickset results, uh, Brickset digging, rather, I found that my rarest polybag is actually this because the fewest people own it, at least on Brickset. So, take whichever answer you want. I'm going to go with this because it's cool to say that this is the rarest polybag because it, it's a pretty cool looking minifig, let's be honest here. So, the stud with the second question in this video, man, I really gotta, you know, stop picking my own questions because if you don't know, the stud is apparently me. So, uh, you know, jokes aside, but uh, the set I'm looking most forward to this summer is the Fire Dragon remake. I'm very excited for this. It looks super, super good from the leaked images, and I cannot wait to get my hands on it. Hopefully as soon as possible. Very, hopefully, Ideally early is where I want to get it, because I think it looks really cool, and I genuinely really like it. And my other friend, Ninja Master 1209 has a question here. It says, what is your favorite set of 2021? And it's easily Ninjago City Gardens. It's it's the best set of 2021. It might not be. It might be the best set ever. Ninjago City is really good, but so is this. Oh, I love Ninjago City Garden so much. I honestly, I kind of want four of these so I can put them back to back to back to back, like I said I was gonna do with Ninjago City. But that's expensive, and this will be expensive too. But I think it would be super super fun. So here we have a non Lego related question from Canadian Builds who asks, "Do you think JJ Watt is washed up, and do you think he will help the Cardinals make the playoffs?" Um, no, he's not washed up. He's still very, very good. And, uh, I think he will help the Cardinals make the playoffs. At least I hope so. Because if the Cardinals don't make the playoffs, Cliff Kingsbury is getting fired. And then we just wasted another year of Kyler Murray's rookie deal when we can get him cheap. So, uh, yeah. But I think he'll help make the playoffs and he's not washed up. He's still very, very good. Burner Builds asks, what is your biggest Lego gripe? Uh, like, inaccuracy, overpriced, etc. Honestly... I think it's inaccuracy because, especially for licensed themes, like for Star Wars and stuff, it's not that difficult. I mean, I understand concept art comes out uh, early and stuff while they're still working on it and things could change. But 
it, I feel like it's one of LEGO's biggest problems. I could be wrong. Uh, you guys tell me what you think about that in the comment section down below. But, uh, other than that, uh, the lack of leg printing slash dual molding where it's needed, like, just pr I feel like they've gotten better with that recently, but I still think it's not great, you know? So, if they fix those two things, I think LEGO, LEGO's still a great brand. I still love their product that they put out. Lots of great things, especially for Ninjago. Ninjago doesn't really have these kind of problems because they don't really have dual molded legs because it's never really a thing. Or, um, like, leg printing. Like, leg printing is on probably every Ninjago minifig ever, if I'm being honest. But I don't really see that much of a problem with Ninjago. But for licensed teams, it definitely needs to, you know, get better. And finally, Red Ninja Red asks, have you ever lost motivation for creating content? If so, how do you feel with that? Um, so simply, sometimes it is lack of motivation, but more recently, it's I don't have ideas. Like, I have some ideas, but I don't know if they'll do well, and I want anything I put out to do well, obviously. And um, I don't have time to do things. I've been playing a lot of, a lot of games and stuff. I know I could stop that, but... Um, talking to my friends doing that stuff and schoolwork during the day it takes up like eight hours of my day so there goes that there's eight or, I don't know, eight or six it's like eight point being and motivation is in there a little bit like I was I was motivated to get this episode out um as soon as I like I was sitting there on uh Thursday which was April 1st so I was like Questions and answers is going to come back. I want to make videos. I want to keep putting out videos for you guys. Hopefully you enjoy them. And questions answered. First thing that came to my mind. And here we are with episode 15. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Again, if you have a question, please leave it in the comment section down below so I can answer it in the next episode, which will come out next Monday. It's going to be a Monday series, so that way I can record it on the weekends and have it up. But thank you guys so, so very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. This is Jimblade 804 signing off. Bye.